was thinking on the way down here, it's almost like there, be, there comes a certain point where it's not that you don't want to get out, it's that you can't. Being hindered. Yeah. So talk a little about that. The hindrance in the life of downtown Los Angeles is most of the time is the reason why a lot of people wind up down here in the beginning, now that you mention it. Because they had a place, you know, lost a job or whatever. And, you know, because they had a record or something or, you know, or something in their past. This is the reason why past, present and future can't be separated because one or the other is going to hinder you at some point in time throughout your life. Believe me when I tell you that, that's why they're intertwined and you can't separate one without the other. But the fact of the matter being is, without those credentials, man, it's like one time I get out of prison, I had the money, I had got the check for the um, driver license. They told me that because I had been out of the system for seven years, I was non-existent in their system. They couldn't prove that I had any identification whatsoever. So I had to go and get a birth certificate, a social security card, all of this before I could do anything. You know, I, I couldn't even go and get an ID because of that. You know, I had to go through those, I had to get those two things to happen first, in which I, fortunately I have a family back east, you know, in Alabama and, and Florida and DC and places like that. That still care about me, even though I haven't been home since 98. <laughs> ah, sometimes that gets to me too, but that's so why I thank God for, you know, FaceTime on these phones. You know what I mean? You can actually get to see, you know, a person and, and, and see what they look like and the shape they're in. You know, it's not like being there in person, but it makes a big difference, trust me, it does. You know, compared to back in the day, when, when you, all you could do was hear a person's voice, you know? But the fact of the matter being is, I had my sister get me, a, you know, order me a birth certificate and she sent it to me. And I got it yeah, about 10 days after she, you know, the process started. And then I was able to go and I was able to get an ID. Now, since that time, they've come up with this system to where, like, if you're on GR, you know, or you can go to the welfare office or something, you know, someplace where it's connected through the, throughout the system and get a printout of your ID, you know, it's to show that you've had one. And yet and still some places won't even accept that for a proof of identity, you know, because of the fraud thing that goes on and, you know, in computers, anybody can make an ID, that's true. But it's unlikely to have the true stamp on it. You know what I mean? There's some difference that, you know, they can discern the difference, but yet still, I don't know if it's the lack of them going through the motion of proving that this paper is legit or not. You know, or they just say, well, we ain't gonna do that. You know what I mean? You gotta go get a real ID before you can do that. And this is the problem that people, and, and after a while, people just get tired of doing that, man. You know, like, what's the purpose of going and getting one? You know, my here in the streets, I ain't got nobody in the industry. What if it come up missing, just like mine? I just got my ID back the original ID in the mail about three weeks ago. Right now, I can't even tell you where it's at. Not because I didn't, you know, I was irresponsible with it or it came up missing out of my tent, which is where all my belongings is. I have, you know, that's the only place I have to keep it up on my person where I can just grab it at any time other than on myself, you know? And somewhere in, in between me and taking a shower here somewhere else. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if I go through these clothes right here and find it. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. But I, I have a big agenda sometimes and I don't get a chance to complete a lot of the things I start because of that. You know, because only so many daylight hours in the day. And me being a night owl, really, <laughs> I'd rather function under it, you know, and they say the cloak and dagger thing of darkness, you know what I mean? <laughs> you 
you know, you're less conspicuous, you're less obvious, you know what I mean? And, and you can slip around and do things, get past things, people, you know? Not that I have anything to hide, it's just less people I have to deal with, less situations I have to deal with, that type of thing. And, you know, being out here and dealing with a lot of people with mental issues, I mean like real, real mental issues, it's like, it's like the night that I got jumped, you know? It, I walked right into an ambush, you know? I walked right into a place where one of the first places I became to know and hang out is right around the corner called um, San Julian Park. And uh, I remember when that park, it, it, it was just a lump of dirt, you know, just on the side of a building, a lump of dirt. And it's came a long way now. You know, they got water fountains in there now, and, you know, um, porty potties, you know, and they keep them clean every day pretty much. And, it's not as much fighting and, and stabbing and shooting at the park as it used to be. The cops used to come down, like on Saturday and Sunday, you know, that, that used to be the hangout, you know, like where everybody come and say hello and, you know, people ain't seen people, you know, even people that was down here and got away would come down, you know, but back then the cops were so bad, man, it's so crooked and, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to say that it took things like the Rodney King beating, you know, the uh, Rampart scandal, and all of this, what's going on now, you know, with the George thing, you know what I'm saying? It's sad that it took all of that to see how crooked some of these cops are. You know, this, you know, they don't even put the sign on the side of the door no more. <laughs> We're here to serve and protect. They don't, even, they don't even put that on the side of the door anymore. You know what I mean? And people used to, that, that, you know, that used to give some people hope. You know what I mean? That, you know, to, to feel safe. Can't even do that anymore, man. <laughs>